Pull-offs are an essential guitar technique that you need to know how to perform, and they're a lot easier than you think. Pull-offs can make you a faster player, they can make you a more precise player, and ultimately just give you more command over the fretboard. And in this video, I'm gonna show you some quick and easy ways to do pull-offs and clean up your existing pull-offs if you've already given them a try. And if you stick around to the end, I've got a bonus exercise that you can use every single day to make sure your pull-offs are in tip-top shape. All that right after this. This acoustic guitar quick win is brought to you by Tony'sAcousticChallenge.com. Tony Policastro here from Tony'sAcousticChallenge.com, where we're all about expanding our quality of life through music and having fun with our guitars. And one way that you can have more fun with your guitar today is to learn how to properly do a pull-off. Now, what exactly is a pull-off? And pull-offs are kind of like a, um, it's almost an economy of motion thing. What you're doing with a pull-off is essentially out of one picked note, you're gonna magically get two notes. Here's an example. I'm on the second fret of the D string here, and this is what a pull-off sounds like and looks like. So one picked note, two actual notes. Fretted note to an open string. You've probably heard them in songs uh, such as this. Uh, or the, uh, another bluesy tune. Those are all situations uh, where you can hear a pull-off in context. Now, one of the things that I see immediately with, with, with students performing pull-offs is that the tone diminishes almost immediately. Right when you even think about pulling off of the fretted note, all of a sudden it feels like there's no sound left in your guitar. Something that sounds kind of like this. That's probably the most common pitfall with pull-offs, is that as soon as you pull off, the sound goes away. And ideally, you want the two notes to be equal in level, the fretted note and then the note that you pull off too. So one of the ways to fix that is to actually pull off with some speed, okay? So when you pull off the note, you wanna actually remove your finger quickly. And you wanna do this because the longer you keep your finger in contact with the string, the more your finger's actually gonna absorb the energy within the string. The more energy your finger absorbs, the less sound that's gonna come out of your guitar. Think of it this way. You have a string that's short and you're pulling off into a longer string. So you're taking the energy from a short string and trying to put it into a longer string. So if you pull off slowly, that energy doesn't transfer right away. Whereas if you pull off much quicker, you get more energy within that string. Now, even still pulling directly off, even if you do it super fast, there's still a little bit of a, 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 a difference between the tone, right? You have this first note, which is nice and strong and confident and really loud, and then you have this second note that's just a little bit below. The volume doesn't quite match up. So that brings me to another thing you can do to your pull-offs immediately that will get them sounding beefy and beautiful and just downright amazing, and that is give them a little flick. Okay, think of it like this. I want you to imagine yourself in the third grade, your buddy's sitting in front of you, you have a rubber band on the end of your finger and you're about to flick it at the back of his head. That feeling of the rubber band coming off the edge of your fingertip is exactly how I want your pull-offs to feel. Let me explain. So from that fretted note, and again, I'm using my middle finger on the second fret of the D string here. I'm gonna fret that note, I'm gonna pick the string, I'm gonna pull slightly down, and then let that string kind of just roll off the edge of my fingertip. Just like that. That's gonna give that string, that pulled off, the, the, the pull off, it's gonna give it a little extra oomph so you can match that volume to the first note. It's a nice little trick that I like to use and it, it, when, I, when I was first taught it, it made a huge difference in my pull offs, but it also integrated a new problem. When I first started that trick, I started running into other strings. And my pull-off sounded extremely sloppy because it's almost as if I was just kind of just haphazardly running into the other strings. So one way to combat that is when you do that little flick and that down motion, have your finger actually run into the next string, but keep it there so it deadens it. This way, that string won't make any noise. Now, if that's too difficult of a, a physical movement, no worries, there's another way around that. 
If you're holding your pick between your thumb and your index finger, you can use your middle finger to actually rest on the string beneath the string that you're picking. This way, it's muted. So you can run into it and it's not gonna make any noise. So those are some tips that'll help you clean up your pull-offs, make them more consistent and ultimately more powerful. Now, I wanna give you a bonus exercise, something that you can take all of what you've learned thus far and put it in one nice tight little package that you can use at the beginning of, of all your practice sessions. Now, I want you to know that pull-offs come in, let's say two different flavors. The first of which is a fretted note to an open string and the second of which is a fretted note to a fretted note. Now don't worry, regardless of which one you encounter, the mechanics are the same. So I wanna share this exercise with you because it wraps up all the mechanics you just learned into a nice little bundle so you can practice your fretted to fretted pull-offs pull and your fretted to open string pull-offs. So let me show you what this exercise is. We're gonna start in first position, which essentially means our index finger's gonna handle everything on the first fret, middle finger everything on the second, ring everything on the third, pinky everything on the fourth. And the starting position for this exercise, I want you to pretend like you're fretting all of those frets, okay? Even though it seems a little redundant because we're really only concerned about the fourth fret, I want you to practice fretting all of those frets all at once. You'll see in a second. So the first movement of the exercise essentially is our pinky finger is gonna be fretting that fourth fret of the low E and we're gonna pull off to the third fret of the low E, like so. That's the first movement. The second one is pulling off the third fret to the second fret. So you can take your ring finger fretting the third fret of the low E and then pull off to the second fret of the low E. And then you may have guessed it, your middle finger will now pull off the second fret of the low E to the first fret of the low E. and then your index finger will pull off from the first fret of the low E to the open string. Now that's just on the low E string. You can do this exercise anywhere on the neck. You can do it on the high E string, in the middle of the neck, whatever the case may be. In fact, if you're just starting out with pull-offs, I would recommend starting on the high E string because then you don't even have to worry about running into other strings. It definitely gets more complicated uh, the lower strings you go. So just keep that in mind. And again, this is an exercise that you don't have to play fast. It's not about speed here. It's about focusing on the mechanics of a good, clean, proper pull-off so that you can really refine this technique and when you run into the little symbol on the tablature, the little P, you're no longer concerned with whether or not your pull-off's gonna sound good. You know it's gonna sound good because you've done the work. Now, I hope you totally dug this lesson. In fact, I wanna know how it, go, how it went for you. So please leave a comment below and let me know how did it go. And if I forgot anything, you can mention that in the comments as well. If somebody told you a tip or a trick or something like that that you wanna share with the community, please fire away in the comments. I'd love to read it and I'm sure everybody watching would love to read it as well. And speaking of love, if you dug this lesson, you're absolutely gonna love my five day acoustic guitar challenge. You're gonna get a brand new exercise every day for five days. It's gonna help bolster your practice routine and you're gonna be exposed to new techniques you can apply to your playing immediately. All you have to do to sign up is click the link here in this video or in the description below. It's gonna take you to a, sec uh, a separate page and then once you sign up, you'll be playing your first exercise within 10 seconds, maybe even five seconds depending on how fast you type. So I encourage you to start that five-day acoustic guitar challenge today and I'll see you on the next lesson.